Oh, man. Hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Our next guest is a super talented stage and film actress who also happens to host a very popular podcast called Little Known Facts. With over 150 episodes to date with today's most successful artists, she engages her guests in intimate conversations that are hilarious, vulnerable, revealing, and inspiring. Uh, I'm hoping we hit at least two out of those four today. Uh, folks, the great Alana Levine is here. How about that? Can you make some noise? Because I'm excited. Excited, man. They're excited. You're excited as well. I can feel it. A lot of excitement in the air. We're going to bring her out in just a second. But first, I believe we have a look at the show. So let's go ahead and run that clip. Ilana Levine, Little Known Facts, take one. Slate your name. Ilana Levine. How tall are you? Five, six and a half. What will you be singing for us today? They're singing. Hey, I heard you need an inspiration. He's a lot of and friends with some revelations. Little known back to the day. Every little thing's gonna be a okay. A okay. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of Levine is here. Come on! Hey everyone. Oh, Alana, welcome to the show. It is so nice to have you here. I am so confused that I'm in this seat right now and I, not in that seat. I was concerned for you in I that have regard. I so many questions for you. Too bad. <laughs> uh, no, that's wonderful. We're, it's going to be a very uh, reciprocal relationship here. I mean, I like I'll ask that. a couple, you ask a couple, right. and we'll just we'll go through this experience together. Perfect. I'm going to start with a very simple one. How are you? I am so, I was saying back, can we say we were hanging out before we, this? I think we were. Better. We were hanging. I watch this YouTube content all the time. So it's very heady. I'm a little starstruck right now to be in this space when you are so used to, as I am, watching it in the comfort of my bedroom. So I'm thrilled to be here. I think you are a great interviewer. And now that I do what I do, I'm so sensitive and I watch things with that sort of lens so i'm thrilled you never know which host you're going to get when you come on this show That's true. you roll the we dice we spin a wheel before exactly. you guys walk out and exactly. then we're all ready to go i'm so and then happy. it's a roll of the dice anyway it's a rainy beautiful day in new york city and here we are it certainly is and uh thank you so so much for the kind words that means a lot i am a fan of the podcast i too will listen to your conversations we have a lot of overlap with our guests yeah and and i love listening to the conversations that you have in your space and the things that you guys get into uh it, it's such a wonderful show and I'm very curious I got a taste of this backstage when we were talking but what inspired you to start this show you're an actress you're a performer what what did, what was it that said I want to pull the curtain back I want to go on the other side you know the truth is because of my age the internet and all the access to YouTube and information about the world of being an artist was not available to me. It was really limited. Like I could go to the library and take out a few books written by some older English actors about what it is to be an actor. And although I was in awe of Sir John Gilgood, <laughs> among others, I didn't feel like his story would be my story exactly. So when I realized that now there was a way to share kind of what it really is to be an artist, I thought all the dressing room conversations that I was having in play after play with the most extraordinary artists where they just told the truth, the highs and lows, the, the struggles and the triumphs, I thought if I had had that when I was first starting out, I wouldn't feel so alone, which isn't to say I didn't have friends where we talked about like, oh my God, I bombed that audition, me too. And then sometimes you got the audition you bombed, which was so confusing. Like, oh, wait a minute, there's no kind of linear step-by-step -step process to being a performer. So I guess I thought if I could share Julianne Moore or, you know, um, Edie Falco or one extraordinary friend of mine after another with others and so they could hear how very real it is, kind of boots on the ground day to day, uh, people would stay with their dream because they would see that, of course, there are like really huge hurdles. But if you love it, don't stop. Exactly. So that was sort of my thought about it. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, it's a really, it, you're right, it is a very interesting time to be a creative person, to have this kind of drive and passion, because while not only the tools are being made more accessible and easily available, this wealth of knowledge, just all of this experience that people are, are, are revealing and, and, and talking about, you know, one of the hallmarks of your show is is the intimacy of the conversation yeah. and, and the comfort your guest feels in revealing stuff. How do you, as a host, go about creating an environment that makes them feel comfortable that way? So, not to spend this entire episode focusing on the thing that I hate talking about, which is my age. Um, I do feel like one of the fabulous things about having been an actor and a professional person and a human for a long time now is the incredible community of people I've collected. I've been acting for over 20 years and I've done one zillion plays or TV shows or all the things I've done. And so I've collected the most incredible group of friends. And that has only happened because I've lived as long as I've lived and I've had as many jobs as I've been lucky and fortunate enough to have. So when I started this idea, which was totally random, backdoor, someone was like, hey, do you want to do a podcast? And I've always loved the intimacy of audio storytelling. Um, I used to do radio plays for fun with friends. I love listening to podcast content, so it took me a long time to feel confident enough to call myself a podcast host. I listen to Terry Gross. I listen to people who are the um, pioneers of this long-form uh, interview process, but I did know that I had really talented, inspiring people in my life who I knew to be so generous, and I had a feeling that if I invited them to share their real selves... Um, and to help me demystify this process for other people that they would come along. So John Slattery of Mad Men fame is one of my oldest friends. He owed me because I introduced him to his wife. Fair enough. You're going to cash that yeah. one in forever. And he That's thinks easy. we're even now. I feel like there are many more favors to yeah. come. Um, he was my first guest. And as you know, if you have someone like John Slattery, who is beloved by everybody and does all the things, film, television, and theater. Once he came on as my first guest, it was so easy for me to go, hey, Matthew Broderick, hey, Sarah Jessica, John's hey, been here. John Slattery. And John immediately, um, he said something really interesting to me. When we were done, he was like, you remind me of Howard Stern. And I thought, wow, I don't know what he means by that. Yeah, keep going. Right. <laughs> exactly. I was like, I thought you had fun today. And he was like, you know, I felt like you were totally in control of this conversation, yet I felt safe and free and vulnerable at yeah. the same time. So he meant it as a compliment. I was like, did you find me kind of, you know, raunchy yeah. in some way? Crashed but that was not what way. he meant. Was a glib? Exactly, was it? exactly. But so that was like a really nice vote of confidence. And I just thought I'm going to keep going. I did not expect to be doing it three years later. I didn't expect that it would now be a film series. Um, but how fun. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that we're going to unpack in there as we go throughout the conversation, but something you mentioned, uh, the word twice that I heard you use was Old. confidence. No. <laughs> H? I, but that, I, you could look at the cards. Not once does that appear on it here, did. I assure okay. you. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, but the, the confidence thing, uh, I did want to speak to because I was listening uh, to one of your most recent podcasts, and there is a confidence. There is an air. When you hear a tangent within something that you want to get to, you're going to stop. I want to talk about that. Don't worry. We'll come yeah. back. But give me that right now. And you mentioned that it took time for you to feel confident, to call yourself a host. Do you remember when that switch flipped, when you started feeling like a host? Was there a singular experience you went, wow, you know what? I I do feel confident. I am pretty good at this. So this is sort of random, but sort of the ways in which people you admire when they say something nice to you, it's really meaningful. Um, Mike Berbiglia is one of the most talented humans on the planet, um, and he actually found me on Twitter and said, I would really love to come on your show. Uh, and I, so we started the DM thing, you know, the kids call it DMing. And, uh, and he was like, I heard your conversation with Michael Ian Black. Michael is one of my best friends. I've heard every interview he's ever done. And you are the first person to kind of crack the code on Michael Ian Black. He was so vulnerable and honest. And I learned things about him that in all my years of friendship with him, uh, I didn't know. And there was something about, I mean, there have been lovely kind of moments along the way, but there was something about him saying that, A, like Mike Birbiglia, I yeah. worship him, listens to my podcast. Um, but that was just, I mean, there are many lovely moments, but I would say to answer your question, that is a very specific moment where I was like, 
Yeah, and Mark Marin's producer, um, WTF was such an inspiration for me when I started, and Brandon McDonald, this extraordinary human, was like, I think you're great. And I was like, well, you've done 75 billion hours of this kind of content. He's Mark's editor as well. So just people like that. Yeah, when it comes from those places, that yeah. it, it has a lot of weight behind yeah. it. When did you know people were listening, that it was working, that it wasn't just you exploring this world? So I am an actress who's been on Broadway many times, yeah. so it makes sense to me that when I'm at a Broadway show, people come up to me and they're like, oh my God, I you know, I listened to you as Lucy and Charlie Brown a million times or whatever. And people started coming up to me. And I always wonder, like, oh, I wonder which show they know me from. Um, and they were like, I love your podcast. So suddenly a community of people who I've known and been a part of uh, in, you know, in this lane were suddenly coming up to me and more and more on the subway. Someone heard me talking on the phone before the doors closed and I couldn't talk anymore. And they were like, Oh my God, your voice, is that Alana? Yeah. Yes. So it's lovely, yeah. There was a, another great episode, it was a short one, but you interviewed your mom. Uh-huh. And I'm reminded of it as you talk about like Are you trying to make me cry? No, 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 <laughs> we're not, <laughs> I promise. It's but, not even noon. But, um, but that episode was great because uh, it was really interesting to hear you sort of have a conversation that I think outside of this realm you wouldn't yeah. typically have with your mom exactly where you got to kind of dig so I, I wanted to know how excited were you to use this skill set these set of tools that you'd been building for a couple of, for a year for 150 episodes what it's been yeah and then you got to to use that to learn more about your own mom you know if you listen to the episode with dame helen as we call it um it was an extraordinary thing because my mom is a very busy person mm -hmm. and she is a deflector. And maybe that's why I enjoy being a host as much too. When you're the one asking the questions, there's not uh, a lot of focus on you. Mm -hmm. And people find that ironic that as an actor, but when I'm, I'm not working, I'm really shy actually. Um, and I found that all the journalistic skills that I would use in researching a character were, were a perfect um, skill set to have as a host, right? Yeah. So I saw with my mom that her instinct, just like me, was to keep kind of throwing it back. And finally, I just stopped uh, the, the recorder and I was like, you just have to let me focus on you. Yeah. Just, it'll be really short. And once she kind of was told, these are your marching orders, you're going to yeah. just answer questions about you. Um, it was remarkable. And I found out so much about her that I never knew. And so I'm so grateful that I'm doing the show because it just created circumstances exactly. that I don't think would have happened ordinarily. And, um, it's going to be a favorite forever. Yeah, you have that now. That is preserved forever. That exists, that moment, that conversation. And fans love it. And I, and I would say that I've been very um, curious or finding a balance about how much of myself to share. And I am finding that at this point, so far into the game, that people are listening because they also want to hear my take on things and, and want to know more about me. And so that became one of the most, like, thousands upon thousands of people all over the world have written me, <laughs> like, about my mom. So Helen's a little bit of a star now. Dame Helen is, in fact, a star. Exactly. Dame Helen was always a star. She but now was, the rest of the world's but caught now up. in, like, yeah. yeah, in Dubai. They're very interested in her. What does Dame Helen think of that when she found out that people in Dubai are responding to her conversation? Do you know what? She's just a very, um, uh, un- she, what's the word I'm trying to look for? My mother is very impressed by things, yeah. but they don't have to do with that. They have to do with like, how much charity work did you do today? Like she is the best person. So all of these things are wonderful if it then creates um, some sort of spark or desire to go do good in the world. So for her, if it helps someone decide like, I'm gonna go do some volunteer work today, she will be happy. Yeah, she has cool. zero vanity. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's an amazing quality yeah, for a human to amazing. possess. Yeah. Um, there's so much that, that I want to ask you, uh, but one thing that's imperative that we get to is the fact that this amazing thing that you've built, that you've honed, that you've worked so hard for, uh, it, it's been recognized and has now been filmed and, and brought to screen <laughs> it's so uh, for the Stage Network, which yeah. is so exciting and so cool. I think you did six episodes, you yeah, said, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about that briefly. You know, they come to you, they say, hey, this thing that's really special and intimate and between just the two people, we want to take it and, and do it in a completely different way, but be exactly and the I same. Wasn't 
unsure. Exactly. In fact, I, I, I at first was like very flattered. Um, and then I felt like, but the thing that's been so successful about the podcast, the podcast booth is like a confessional. Right. If you come over and see it, it's like tiny and cozy. And I think part of why people are revealing so many things is they're kind of like, oh, it's like we're all, we're just cuddled up on a couch sort of thing. Um, so I was uncertain if that kind of intimate conversation could happen if there were cameras around. And I don't know, I thought about it. I decided like who would be the people who would be best suited for my first kind of time out of the gate. All up that favor. Uh, exactly, <laughs> who else did I introduce to their wife? Um, but you know, like even looking around the studio, I was kind of thinking that the cameras would be really intrusive, but we built this really beautiful set and the cameras are really far away and so after the initial, like, obviously we're getting mic'd and someone's kind of putting powder on us, as soon as those moments were done, all of the kind of technology that makes television happen was absolutely, like, not a part of the experience. And we immediately just, like, it was like being in my living room. The set looks like my living room. It was perfect. So I am so happy. And other than, for me, the anxiety of kind of what it is when you're on camera yeah. versus coming to work in your pajamas. Um, yeah, that was a good part of it. Um, I just feel like the conversations are uh, extraordinary because these guests were just so willing to go wherever we wanted to go together. So it's on the Stage Network. That's the name of this new streaming platform. Watchstage.com, yeah. I believe, is where people it's can It's amazing, go see it. and there's yeah. like a free trial yep. if you want to start. You just watch it, yeah. But if you sign up, I think literally, you guys, it's like $4 a month. Yeah. It's, it's really a good deal. They have such incredible content. Amazing content yeah. from there. So yeah, it's thrilling. And unique stuff that you, you seriously can't find anywhere else. It's, no. pretty, it's pretty crazy. And your show is there. And well. my show is there. Yeah. And I'm such a junkie for like behind the scenes stuff. So there's so much like great documentary mm -hmm. content about like the like Green Day is a band I loved. American Idiot was a Broadway show based on their music. And so you kind of get to see how Green Day was a part of that process. And, and so those sorts of like movies, aside from my show, right. there's just tons of incredible content for theater and non-theater lovers alike. 100%. Did you find yourself at all changing? It sounds like a lot of the adjustments to, to, to make it work were you know, uh, in the technical area and cultivating this vibe. But did you yeah. have to change your approach or how you got into the conversation at all? Or was that preserved? You kept that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the only thing we did that, um, you know, the audience got to see today, and you'll see it when you watch the show, you at home. Um, we did, you know, every actor before every audition has to do a slate, which is this very awkward moment where suddenly you're standing in front of a camera and they're asking you to say like your name, yeah. which suddenly you're like, what is my name? Very simple questions. How tall are you? And you're like, is there a right answer or a wrong answer? So the one thing every actor did before their um, interview was a slate, and they didn't know that was happening. So they didn't know that was gonna be part of the day. And what was fascinating is seeing Zachary Quinto and Ben Platt and John Slattery and all of these extraordinary talents who probably don't audition much anymore, immediately go back to that vulnerable, sweet, I want this job yeah. feeling. And so somehow by starting with that, I think it brought all my guests back to their roots, back to this wanting. Yeah, and um, yeah, and it's great fun and it's a great way to button you know, every episode in the sure. way that we do. That's a really smart little technique of yeah. like finding that thing that's sort of universal that they've all kind of experienced yes. very early on and bringing it back yeah. to sort of transport them to that moment yeah. and then have your conversation. Totally. And, and I do one, I had to come up with like countless funny ones and did. Yeah. And so each episode starts with, in the title sequence, a different one of me saying something humiliating. In, in this whole experience in doing these 150 plus uh, yeah. episodes in the six life, how, how is all of that, all of these conversations, how, how has it come back to you and your process as a performer, as an actor? How has it informed what you do on stage? I made the show I wished I'd had for me always because yeah. every single person has shared something about their process, their creative process, forget even the hilarious audition stories that they yeah. share. But I'm about to do a huge play, Richard Greenberg, a Tony nominated, um, a Tony winning yeah. uh, playwright, has a new play coming up at Manhattan Theater Club. I've just been cast in a huge part in this play. Hold for applause. Yeah. 
<laughs> thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. And so part of me is like, oh my God, thank God. It's actually, I think I have like 170 episodes at this point, And I've been re-listening to them. Like, all you need to do, guys, is listen to Judith Light's episode. Oh, what a good one. Uh, not just about how to approach a part, how to live your life. And all of them have become sort of touchstones. I wish I could wear every episode like a talisman around my neck. Exactly. But in terms of like, you know, from Alice and Janney giving us tips on how to learn lines yeah. um, to, you know, Edie Falco talking about literally like, I know it all and then I get there and I throw it all away. So I have all of these people um, as teachers now, yeah. not just friends. And so I am hoping that when I start this project in earnest as an actress, um, that they will all come along with me. Yeah, yeah that's the funny thing about uh, the, the position that we find ourselves in. We have all these conversations, and you have so many. It's very easy to allow them all to kind of blur together, but there are these moments that stand out that stick with you and these lessons, and these yeah. you start to see these through lines. No matter how varied all the guests are, how different all the conversations may be, you start to find these universal things, and I, you find yourself at the end of the day being like, I got to take that with me. I got to do something with that. Totally, yeah. and Cynthia Nixon, who's also on my show, what really blew my mind was she talked about her stage fright and I was like, okay, Cynthia Nixon has won 7,000 Tonys. I may yeah. be slightly exaggerating, but not maybe by one. Yeah. Um, and the idea that Cynthia, before she goes on stage with, with a lifetime of experience, um, has the same physical um, discomfort mm -hmm. that happens to me, yeah. just gave me the courage to go, okay, I'm still gonna cross the threshold. It is the craziest thing going from backstage to on stage. It's a one inch difference in space, right? But there's something about going over that threshold where your body is like, uh, no, I'm sorry, what do you, nope, nope. Yeah. And you still have to do it. Yeah. Um, and so knowing that there are many beautiful performers who've come before me, yeah. Uh, who have suffered <laughs> in the same way Hard. with that moment. Yeah. Not the joy, obviously, right. but, the, but the fear that it never goes away is... Um is helpful for me to hold on to. For sure, I think there's a comfort in, in knowing that, and knowing that you're you're not you're not alone. Yeah. And that you, this experience is something everyone has and, and joins and shares in, uh, and it's it's a it's a beautiful moment. When everybody kind of acknowledges that and gets to sort of live in that together. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And my whole thing is community. Like, if you ask, like, what word do I want to sort of have on my shirt, my bumper stickers, maybe you know, on my tombstone one day? It's like this show that I've been doing has been um, part of building a community. Mm -hmm. And I feel like anything that we can do to keep that going now more than ever um, is really happy making yeah. for me. So that I'm a part of that in some small way, bringing people together rather than us feeling more divided has just been a crazy gift that I never expected when I went on this adventure. Well, we started this conversation with you saying some some very kind things about uh, myself and our show. And uh, before we go to our audience q and I'd like to return that. I, I am genuinely a fan. I think you do a beautiful job Thank with this you. podcast and with your conversations. A and uh, uh, it's been a gift having those conversations as someone who's on the same uh, same team, if, yeah. if you will, to, yeah. to hear other people open up and be vulnerable uh, in other places and areas. It, it makes our job a little bit easier to have someone else out there doing a similar thing. And I love the stuff that you do. So thank, thank you for being you. here. It's been a real treat having you on my show show with oh. us. It's been really awesome. Um, now, we got some questions okay. from the outside world. Uh, is okay. the beauty of us being live. Is there live. an outside world? Uh, from here, Beyond there is. The this is it. Right. <laughs> I wish we never had to leave here, don't you? I don't. Uh, I have a cot <laughs> under the stage, and when we're Do they done, you? they just roll me under there like one of those mechanics' beds, Perfect. and they toss a couple of Snickers bars Sounds my way. Fun I'm size. In. Yeah, in. it's nice. I got a little lava lamp down there. This first one's from Twitter. Uh, at Marin Ireland says, who was your favorite podcast guest? Uh, trick question. Okay, who is your second favorite? That's cute. Um, first of all, I love Marin yeah. Ireland so much, and she's going to be here today. She'll be here shortly, yeah. So this is my friend who's being funny because she's a famous, fabulous actress, and of course she is my favorite guest. But by the way, it's sort of, you know, I can't, it's like asking which of my children is my favorite. Um, Marin was so extraordinarily insightful, hilarious, and um, generous that she ended up coming back. She is a two-parter. Um, Homeland alone was, you know, uh, 
I don't know, an hour. Um, but she's amazing. So uh, yeah, it's, you know, if you write into me, you're my favorite. It's that simple. <laughs> That's how you get it. <laughs> exactly. You know what you got to do? Here's what we do here. We've had, uh, we've had, I told you this backstage, a couple of people from Nat Geo and animal, they bring animals. Yes. So I can say baby cheetahs. Nobody gets mad at that. No one gets mad. But had That's I it. known I could have brought my Shih Tzu Lola today, next little, time. little known fact about Lola me, next time. my third child is my dog. Yes. <laughs> little known fact. Yes. Okay, we've Just got so it. Know. Perfect. You yes. got that in just under the wire. Totally. Uh, Kate, we have time. I would love to get at least two. There we go. Perfect. So we got microphones. Go for it. Hi. Um, as an avid podcast listener, I was wondering if you had any recommendations for some of the, your favorite podcasts you're listening to right now. Yeah. I mean, I do listen to Oprah's Super Soul. Um, her guests are just all inspirational in so many ways. Um, and I listen to The Daily. I don't have time to read the newspaper cover to cover anymore, but I do feel like I can have a pretty engaging, somewhat informed conversation about current events by listening to that show. So those are two that are constantly cycling through. What's the? Do you have like a, a weird, obscure podcast that you feel like you're the only person that listens to it? That is a really good question. I don't know that I do. Yeah. I don't know that I do. I mean, I have been listening. I don't know that it's obscure, but I have been listening to Office Ladies. Oh, we had them here. They're great. Yeah. <laughs> they did. So my kids are obsessed with The Office. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I missed it the first time around, mm -hmm. but I basically have listened to half of every, what is it, 22 seasons at this uh, point? Yeah. Like that. Yes. There's nine, but yes. So now I'm like, I'm going to watch this show. And uh, yeah, my husband did a film with John Krasinski, and I sort of pretended the entire time we were in Malta, like that I knew the show. Yeah. Oh, um, that's so problem. now. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, no. exactly. So now I feel like they need to work together again so I can be like, I love that episode where you asked Pam. <laughs> yeah. I kept saying Pam because I knew like Pam was on the show. That's all anyway, you had. That that's all I had. <laughs> but I do love Office Ladies. Yeah, They're doing great. Like, so you really like the show? Oh yeah. Love it. Love, the love it. It was improvised, wasn't right? it? Yeah. A lot, lot of, of it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Um, he's doing okay without me. I think he is. Mr. Yeah. Krasinski's doing just he's, fine. He's, yeah. he's making it work. Yes. He's getting by. Yeah. Uh, he's under the stage too. We've got time for one more, uh, one more question. <laughs> Come on down. Hi. Hi. Um, so I'm just wondering, when you were starting the show, how did you go about establishing the format for it and how it might have changed over the years? You know what's crazy? Uh, it has changed so little. Like when I listen back, I think I, I have figured out more, I don't know, beginning, middle, and end in terms of the structure of it. Um, you know, I start with a very short bio. I realized people Google everything, so I didn't need to read every credit of my guest or spend time doing that. Um, and then ending either with, depending on if the guest is a performer or a non-performer, I came up with this kind of end of episode, either tell me your worst, most humiliating audition story, or if they're non-actors, a little known fact about themselves. Um, and that was sort of something that kind of grounds the top of the show and the end of the show. And then I also kind of became really good at editing as I'm having the conversation. I was spending so long editing out my like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I realized like if I just nodded, they would know I was listening and I didn't have to say mm-hmm out loud. Um, the number of mm-hms that I edited out was probably 700 hours of editing. <laughs> and editors are not cheap. So I learned those things along the way, which is I can listen with my eyes, which on a podcast is, you know, good to know. I listen with my ears and my eyes. But anyway, so that was something that kind of remained the same and I learned along the way. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Do you have, let me ask you this, mm. uh, let's talk shop. Okay. <laughs> do you have written notes in front of you Nothing. that you ignore? Nothing. Or do you, you, you get, do all your homework and so then- I spend so yeah. much time researching and it's exactly sort of how you are when you show up to do a show. You've done all your preparation and then it's your job in the moment to just be present. So I don't, I, maybe the very first one, actually I didn't because it was Slattery and I like, he's my brother. Yeah, you're talking Exactly. Friend. No, and I do them live without notes. I just trust at this point that um, I will get to the things that are interesting to me and then I'm going to be wildly surprised by the things that my guests bring in. Um, I've gotten really good at knowing, like, we're almost done with this half hour. Like, I sense time now. There are things that I'm understanding uh, without having to look at a clock or look at a note. Um, yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's interesting. I've done oh, hundreds of these at this yeah. point, and I, I look at you. I'm having a conversation with you. Part of like how I prepare, I still have just my little safety net in case I forget a tune in time or a call right. or something like that. But I, I do that. I keep it up here, and then I like to just have the conversation. But and the just difference listen. between you and me is yeah. I can record whatever I want afterwards, right? Mm -hmm. So if I've missed anything, I can just record that in the intro. In terms of little details like that, once we're done, you're on to, I mean, you're going to be sad when we're done. I already but, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Oh, I know. You're going to be like, Alana was a good one today. I'm having a good time right now. But you're going to do 12 more of these today. You know, I do one a day. I don't have the energy to do more because of how much work yeah. uh, and preparation I do for each one. Um, but yeah. Very it's cool. really fun. Oh, man. You're right. I am sad. I we got to wrap it up. I know. But you know what? It's bittersweet. I'm sad, but I just, I'm happy because I just had this experience with you. And thank you so much. That's so for, Buddhist. For coming. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Me you too. meditate a lot under the stage. <laughs> I, um... <laughs> I, seriously, what a blast. Thank you so much. Thank Congratulations you. and everything on the amazing uh, play coming up. Yeah. Uh, on the, the recording on Stage Network. Watch Stage Now. You could see, you could watch Little Known Facts. Uh, and there are uh, 160, 870 tons, hundreds of hours yeah. of, of amazing conversations and content waiting for you uh, as a podcast. If you haven't listened to it yet, you are missing out. So look up Little Known Facts. Uh, and if you do listen to it, oh, well, hello there, fellow listener. Um, thank you again to everyone for being a great audience and hanging out with us, asking thank great questions. Questions. Guys. Thanks to those who tuned in at home. One more time, everybody, crazy amount of noise. This is Alana Levine right here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.